The Barrel House is brought to you by you, the listener, and those of you who have chosen to support the show over at patreon.com slash barrelhouse, especially our whiskey legend and out-of-your-mind tier patrons. Without you, the show wouldn't be possible. Hello, and welcome to The Barrel House. Hello and welcome back to The Barrel House. I am your host, Joe Kane, and today we've got a guest. We've got Josh from the Film Appraisers, my co-host from the Film Appraisers. We're going to talk a little whiskey like we do here, and I'm really excited. I've gotten a little time with Josh to kind of convert him, bring him to the dark side, so to speak, and uh, we're going to see how that experience has been for him. Uh, Josh, welcome to the show, bro. No, thanks for having me. This is awesome. My first experience on The Barrel House coming in coming in hot yeah so I'm, I'm really happy. a little peek yeah, behind the happy. scenes i had an in-person guest scheduled for tonight and that fell apart very last minute and josh being the totally solid dude that he is filled in with like literally what like two minutes notice probably two minutes yeah yeah i, I was i had a burger in my mouth as i was oh, now i feel I now i feel terrible <laughs> <laughs> now i feel absolutely terrible uh, <laughs> uh but um no so I can't remember was was Ardbeg the first thing I got you to drink? By far, Ardbeg. I mean, yeah. I'd always, I'd always like whiskeys were my thing, but Scotch was never my thing until you made Scotch my thing. And Ardbeg is the devil that brought me into the fold. It's by far. I, I, it, it's the one that got me. It's the one that got me when I first started getting into that peated scotches and stuff. Like really, when I started getting into whiskey outside of like doing shots, Ardbeg is the one that got me. Um, I was nervous with you with Ardbeg. I wasn't sure if you were going to take to it right away or if it was going to be like a little too much, but, uh, it was like immediate. I think the first night you were like, dude, this is, this is my jam. It is my jam. Yep. It's my go-to. It, it is my by far number one favorite whiskey. There's nothing close to, to coming to it. It's Ardbeg 10 is chef's kids. Yeah. It's, the best. it's it you know there's like a it's like Ardbeg is almost memeified now online because like a like a cult of Ardbeg you see in like a lot of whiskey groups. Um, that's a real popular term in the uh, whiskey tribe, whiskey group, because people who like Ardbeg just really like it, and there's a lot of them. But it is such a really well executed whiskey; it's hard to fault it. Like there's a reason why it has a quote unquote cult, right? It is just. Mm -hmm so well executed um i feel like i've given you a few other recommendations you've sent me a couple that i haven't had or you've sent me like pictures of a couple that i haven't had um, i'm trying to remember what they were um did you have like tx did you have a tx whiskey at one point i did yeah i had a yeah. tx whiskey and that's kind of my go-to like a lot of times when you go to bars or restaurants in texas that one is always a staple like you can always count on that one being so that's an easy, easy drink. That is but not you, a fact here. You cannot count on <laughs> TX being anywhere here. <laughs> yeah. Well, in, in this state, if you put TX on anything itself. For, I mean, yes, that is honestly in a lot of states. That's a thing, right? In a lot of states, you put TX on anything country or whiskey or barbecue or anything like that. It sells. People just associate Texas with that, like mm -hmm. that group. But the funny thing is, like, there is no legal category for Texas whiskey, really. Like, Texas whiskey didn't even exist until, like, 2000 or something like that. Oh, okay. what, what wasn't even, there wasn't even a, a functioning distillery before that. But it, like, immediately, almost, like, in the grand scheme of things whiskey-wise, immediately it has become, like, a borderline institution, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. It's... But there are some distilleries out of Texas that are doing really great stuff. I wish more of it was easily available for me here. There's only a couple of Texas brands that have made it this far up, but the ones that I've mm -hmm. had have been really well executed. Uh, Balconis yeah, and... Um, the Rebecca Creek. I think you had a guest on, was it? Yeah. Uh, the term, um, the Jesse the Barber. Jesse the Barber, right. yeah. I, I haven't still haven't had that yet. We've talked about it a couple times. I, I hear that's very good. Um, now she's biased because she lives in the town in which that's. I think that's made in San Marcos, and that's where she's 
that's where she's from. All right. It's, all right. So that explains it's good. it. <laughs> it's good, but it's, it's, it's good. I'll just say that. It's really I have, good. um, I have a, I have two right now. I have two bottles of Balconis. Uh, one I absolutely love and one I can't stand. Um, yeah. and that's strictly a me thing. The bottle I don't like is the, uh, Texas single malt. Mm -hmm. I did an episode on that and I can't blame the whiskey for that. There's just, there is a personal, all of, all of whiskey, right? I've said this before, like doesn't taste like bananas or doesn't taste like apples. It tastes like how you remember apples to taste. Like, there's like a, a sense memory connection there. And unfortunately for me, the way my broken brain is wired, the sense memory that that Texas single malt gives me is when you burp a little puke up. <laughs> and I just can't do it. I, I have so much of that bottle left. I've had that bottle for, I think, seven or eight years now, and it's still like half full. And I just slowly try to put put it away, but it just triggers that sentiment for some reason. It doesn't quite taste like that, but for some reason, it just reminds me of it. You know, yeah. it's a it's a bad deal. Balconis overwhelms me because, at least here in, in Texas, when I go to the liquor store, there's like seven or eight different balconies. Oh, they have and a I lot. I don't know which ones. I don't, I don't know which one. I don't know enough about it to know which one to try. So I've had about five of them. And outside of the Texas single malt, all the ones I've had have been fantastic. Although I will say, I'm not really sure for you which one I would recommend because I'm not really sure how you do yet with, um, cause we haven't really talked, have we talked about any, have you had any, or have we talked about any like real intense, like high proof whiskeys? Not really. Right. Uh, you, you've not, been, no, not really. I, I can handle it. Like I, I'm cool. Like I, I think you and I have talked about this before off, offline. I'm not a smoker now. I smoked in my youth. But when I smoked, I wanted a red because I wanted to taste the intensity of a cigarette and so I'm you the like same intense. way with whiskey i i like i i want to taste the intensity of the alcohol so, so you might benefit then be cool. so you might benefit so you might be like me where like i was well i was never a smoker but i do smoke cigars now but i never i've never had a cigarette in my life but cigars are pretty intense flavor wise and also i prefer my whiskey as high proof as possible mm -hmm. so you might you might fall in line with me there's a few Balconis, a lot of their whiskeys are like barrel proof, hit you in the face, see how you do. I love Brimstone. If you, I would love to hear what you think about Brimstone. If you could have Brimstone, what you think of it. Um, you could probably get it there. It's available here, so it's got to be available there. Mm -hmm. uh, that's their like um, scrub oak smoked corn whiskey. It says... Mm -hmm. It's like the color of used motor oil, and it says uh -huh. the, the age statement on it is at least one day, which is <laughs> incredibly snarky. Um, but that's a real intense, real smoky, uh, real higher. I think it's I think it's only like 50, 55 proof or whatever, but it's you know it's a it's a punch in the mouth. Um, you might really bring like the, that. Bring bring the smoke, bring the peat. I am. After you got me on Ardbeg 10, I am all for any of those islands. Like, I want as much peace. That's why uh, the Octomore, whenever you had talked about that, it was so intriguing to I me. Sent you a, I, I sent you some artisanal olive oil that was it flavored did. like Octomore, yes. right? It did. It was great. Oh, it was it's so good. Great. I love uh, the Octomore. When you, whenever it is, I mean, it might not be when we originally talked about, but whenever it is, you make it to visit the barrel house in person. Mm -hmm. Um, I've got three Octomores here and you're going to try all of them in person, fresh from the bottle. I'm very excited to do that with you. Um, I will probably grab a bottle and just snuggle up with it on the couch and <laughs> go to bed. Just, just <laughs> hold it just to be near just, it. Just cuddle with it. I'll, I'll be the little spoon for that Octomore. <laughs> so peek behind the curtains, we're on limited time here. So I'm trying to make sure I get my questions in before I forget them. Cause I have a couple of questions I really want to talk about with you. Um, We've worked through a few and you've been pretty, you like your, you approached whiskey the same way you approach the film stuff or you keep like relatively 
organized notes on everything, right? You have like a list of ones you yeah. want to try, a list I'm, of what you've I'm tried. Now. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there's a few, I feel like I've been trying to suggest you stuff as I in, encounter whiskeys I think you would like and might be able to actually find. Um, and you've, you've worked your way through a few suggestions from me. Um, mm -hmm. And I've sent you a couple of olive oils that are flavored just like the whiskeys that I want you to try. <laughs> um, like, where are you at with that? Like, uh, what what's next for you? What do you want to try? Uh, even if it's not for me, what are things you want to try? Things you have tried that you did or didn't like? Like, what's where are you sitting right now as far as outside of Ardbeg and TX whiskey? So the Buffalo Trace, whatever, doesn't matter. The Buffalo Trace is so good. And you can't yeah. find it here because it's always bought up. Like, as soon as it comes in stock, it's gone. I have this huge problem. Usually, the only time I can find it is like a pint behind the behind the cashier. I'll just catch it'll catch my eye, and I'll just say, "Hey, throw that in with it." So, what have what have you Trace. had Buffalo Trace wise? Had it was the let's see, it was the Buffalo Trace. You had Buffalo uh, Trace. You had you it have wasn't Eagle Rare. No, it was just the regular Buffalo Trace, right? It was just regular Buffalo Trace bourbon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Surprisingly, the one I cannot find, and I have been looking for years, I cannot find. It's funny because I can't say the word without saying saying it the way I should. But the Elijah Craig barrel proof. Oh they, yeah. It just doesn't exist. Elijah like Craig. <laughs> right. I'm gonna I'm actually really bummed about that. Speak like yeah. slight side tangent. Um so there's for those of you who don't know, there's a glass shortage right now, like for bottles. Which is why it's become really hard to find certain whiskeys this year. Like they don't have bottles to put it in. Uh, plus there's actually like whiskey production is low. And then the glass shortage on top of that has made it really hard. I have not been able to find like the, I didn't find a single bottle of the a series Elijah Craig barrel proof this year. The B series is out now and I have gone out every weekend looking and haven't found it. I went out today actually, and I picked up three bottles of whiskey and a bottle of gin and went to 12 liquor stores and could not find Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, any of it. I uh, didn't find any of that. I looked for, I found Eagle Rare at one place cause I'm, I like Eagle Rare a lot. It's my favorite of the Buffalo Trace line. And it's my favorite like daily go-to whatever, but I won't pay more than retail for it cause it's not really worth it. It's just a great daily kind of drink. Um, and I'm down to two bottles. I usually have five or six just to keep me floating for when I'm like, don't want to think about whiskey. I just want to sit on the deck and drink. And I only found one place that had it and they wanted legitimately triple retail price for it. Like 90 bucks or something. Yeah. They wanted, yeah, they wanted ju just under a hundred bucks, 99, 99. And like I, it, this year, I feel like this is a really tough year to be into whiskey. It's been really yeah. hard to justify purchases. I bought a bottle. I'm drinking it right now. Actually. I bought a, a bottle of 1792 bottle and bond and it's really good today. Um, but it's just been tough to find that stuff. Um, I'm hoping by the time you make it out here, the, uh, the Buffalo trace stuff gets a little bit easier. Cause I would love to get, I would love to be able to like, feed you some Blantons and feed you some, I mean, I have some Blantons, so I just got to be careful how much I, I drink, feed you some Eagle Rare, let you try some of this stuff. It, that's one thing that I do love about the way you do your show is because my, like I'm looking at my notes, it's exactly that because I got that from your show and it says Buffalo Trace Bourbon, pay retail 30 bucks, not 50. Because, <laughs> yeah, and, and that really does help because well, I have noticed even like with Ardbeg 10, when I go out of town and I just need to go get a bottle real quick and I'll go, I know how much hard, hard bag 10 costs because I've bought it so much now, but I don't know about a lot of these bottles, but I will see an hard bag 10. And I saw it one time it was like 70 bucks. I was like, that's not, that's not, it's crazy. I, I, I was talking with somebody last night actually about that. And it's, you know, the discussion was, well, how do they get away with charging three times retail? And it's because the bottle is known right? People know yeah. Blanton's or they know Eagle rare, but they don't do the research to see what it costs. So they walk into the liquor store, they see the bottle 
they go, oh, that's what John Wick drank, or I've heard of that, or whatever, and they just buy it, and they get robbed. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things, one of the things I wanted to accomplish with the show was like not just giving tasting notes, but like informing people about whiskey, right? Mm -hmm. So all of yep. it, not just like the stuff, you know, the, the surrounding information as well. So I'm glad that that has stuck with you. If I saved you uh, one time from overspending, it made it all worth it. it. It definitely has. And it also has with things like another, um, another thing I liked from the show was, excuse me, um, like Scarabus, where you had explained Scarabus, it's like I don't like saying a poor man's, you know, Ardbeg tin. Yeah, but it That's is not really fair. But yeah, it's like it's a very affordable Ardbeg tin. Yeah, and it's like you can you can taste the you can taste the booze in it. Like you really can taste the the alcohol in it. Yeah, it's but not man, as good that's as a really good Scotch. Yeah, it's not as good as Ardbeg tin for sure, but at half the price, it's a good buy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what about things that you want to try that you haven't yet that are on your list? So I've got one on my list. Um, I think that, I think it was written down because you and I had a conversation about what we just talked about. Really high proof. Is that the 1792 full proof? Yeah. I have a, really a bottle. Proof? I have a bottle of that behind me. Yeah. So full proof and barrel proof are two different terms that confuses a lot of people. Barrel proof is whatever it comes out of the barrel at depending on climate when it's in the barrel the proof can rise or drop depending on whether it's hot or cold whether the alcohol or the water evaporates first so the proof can change full proof is 125 proof which is the maximum amount maximum proof that the whiskey is allowed legally to enter the barrel okay. not come out of and still be bourbon so 1792 full proof is 125 proof and that is the 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 absolute max that it enters the barrel at before aging uh, i love that that's but that is that's high octane that's yeah. that's that's a re that that's a real ass whiskey <laughs> i'm excited about that i can't find that one either i see a 1792 sometimes but i'm looking for exactly what you told me like i write down exactly what the name is and I see a lot of variation, like well, like we talked about, like Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Yeah, I see small batch all the time, but I never to, see. To so be fair, both those whiskeys, 1792 and Elijah Craig. If you buy anything with those names on them, yeah. you're not going to be disappointed. Those are just the ones I like the most on their line. Right, like those those are like the best things they offer. Like the whiskey I'm having today is a 1792. It's the bottled and bond, so it's a hundred proof, four year old. All the bottom of the bond rules um and it's really good i think the full proof is better um but the full proof also can be like especially in the summer a little too high alcohol to really deal with when it's 100 degrees out yeah or in texas 110. right yeah texas plus the texas variants well there is one thing on my list that I haven't tried, I haven't looked for it yet. It's just on my list. And I, I had to ask you about it not too long ago. It was New Riff. The New Riff's yeah. something you had talked about here recently. Well, you had a show on it, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I did the New Riff, the most recent one. I think the only, it might be the only New Riff episode I've done so far is the uh, six-year-old malted rye. Uh, New Riff, period, is killing it. Um, all of their whiskeys have, that I've had have been really, really good. They do single barrel bourbon, a single barrel rye. Um, they do some barrel proofs. They do they do a lot of store picks, but that malted rye is like a $55, $60 bottle of whiskey. And it might be the best rye whiskey. It, it's actually probably in contention for like my top 10, like in my top five or 10 whiskeys under 200 bucks period it's such a good bottle yeah i'm not a rye whiskey guy so you and i forgot it was a rye uh so it must have it must have been there must have been enough meat in that show to tell me yeah that i have to try it because it is a rye i think you even talked about that that yeah i mean even you're you not a huge rye fan right i am 
I go through phases. I'm not a huge rye person traditionally, but lately I've found maybe it's because I've had so much scotch and so much Isla scotch and so much <laughs> space side scotch and so much bourbon that like I just wanted something different. But lately I've been feeling the rise a little more. So mm -hmm. there's that. But um but even if like rye is not your your lane, you would probably just be really you would do really well to just pick up a bottle of like new riff single barrel bourbon and just live with that bottle. It's really good whiskey. Okay. I'm actually making notes as we're talking as we're talking about Yeah, I figured onto You're my notes. <laughs> for those of you who haven't listened to the film appraisers and you totally should because you could hear a lot more of me and Josh over there. Josh is like a religious note taker. He has notes for everything all the time. Always. He's always organized. Like my notes for the show reading are like bullet points with like two words. It's like it's like the shot where the camera does X or whatever. It's like like less than a sentence. Josh is breaking out these like detailed thoughts. I'm like well, I, I, I swear I tried. <laughs> it's not because I'm smart. It's because my memory is so bad. Like if I don't write it down, forget it. I'll never. No, nah, no, nah, it's because it, it's just because you're super organized. I never had a single organized bone in my body. <laughs> so I, I do listen to Barrel House a lot. I mean, I, I listen to it religiously. Anytime a new episode comes out, I listen. To it. And as a listener, I know what I like to hear from, from the show. Like I know there's certain things I'm looking for what makes me want to take the notes so as a listener and as a lot of us listeners I, I, I want to question for you I got like an, a, I'm just going to blow my mind I, I got $200 $300 I'm just going to blow it on a bottle and just celebrate for the night. What what is that bottle it, even if you can't even if it's obscure like you can't get it at the store or whatever I can play magic and it appears right now so, so let's say my budget's 300 bucks. What is that? Let's celebrate bottle. So if I had 300 bucks and I was going to blow it on a single bottle, I would buy whatever the current edition right now. It's the 12, um, 12.3. I feel like the 0.3 is like the most for the Octomores, the 12.3 or whatever. If it's next year, the 13.3 Octomore. But if you asked me, if you said I have three hundred dollars to spend on whiskey for a celebration, I would probably roll you out like a three or four bottle menu, like a medley. Yes, like to to have some, like let's assume you could just get whatever you wanted. I would say get so whatever whatever I want, you could just go to a magic store and have it. I would say get a bottle, the most recent bottle of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Mm -hmm. I would get, which so we'll say that's 70. Usually it's about 70. I would get the most recent Ardbeg committee release. This year it's Ardcore is what they're calling it. And it is a higher proof, super high smoke Ardbeg. Uh, what does that mean, the committee release? What does that mean? Committee release is their one, one a year special edition release. Uh, oh, okay. So it's like the Ardbeg Black or the Ardbeg Ardbeg, which was the... <laughs> The yeah, pirate, one of the pirate bottle. I love that bottle. Um, the, the committee release this year is the hardcore, like hardcore without the H. Uh, I would, I would get, so I would get the Elijah Craig. I would get that. That would put you at about 200 between them, give or take a little bit. And then the last hundred, I would probably spend on like a couple of bottles to be sipping on after you're a little bit drunk, right? So I would say, yeah. get a bottle of rare breed probably that's like 50 bucks that's a higher proof that's like the barrel proof wild turkey and it's very good and then get a bottle of scarabus or ardbeg 10 something in like the 30 to 50 dollar range that you can just enjoy for the rest of the night yeah, like three yeah 300 dollars for one bottle is kind of excessive like i have 300 dollar bottles here for the show for experience i love them but when you boil it right down to bang for your buck you are way better off spending 300 dollars on four really good bottles than one yeah slightly better bottle I, i've seen the websites on octomore 
and yeah, they they were like two hundred because you, they'll ship it right to you, right? Yeah, starting I believe starting twenty twenty one, you can buy Octomore right from Brooklotic online, and they will ship it to you. Whereas before, you had to like go look for it, and it was a real hassle. I spent years like trying to locate a bottle and getting a bottle every couple of years at best or coming across the bottle at a bar every couple of years at best, you know, it was like, it was not available. Yeah. And now you can just, if you can't find it at your local packy, you can just go to the website and get it. You pay a lot for shipping, but you know, if you think about your time, um, if you're gonna drive around for five hours or spend $30 on shipping, you know, really what's the better choice? Um, I know we got a heart out and I really appreciate you stepping in on short notice to, uh, help out tonight, brother. Um, I'm, I'm honored you asked me, man. This is, I, this you know, is we've awesome. been talking about getting you on here for a while and, it's um, it's, it will live, live. It's going to live. It'll definitely happen. Um, I just gotta get the live shows fired back up. They're very tough when you work all the time. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, but I, like, I really wanted you to have a presence on the barrel house in general. Um, I was kind of prioritizing in-person guests, which is why you weren't slated already because I had a few in-person guests scheduled and I'm like, I'm just really appreciative that you were able to make the time on. I'm, I'm honored to be on here. Man. Zero note, cool. literally zero notice. I want everybody <laughs> to realize how little notice it actually was. I was down here. I asked Josh to be on the show and before he answered, I started putting the graphics together to have the film pages logo up in his place just in case. And it's like, I was finishing putting those together as he said he could be on for about a half an hour. So uh, it was right by the wire. So I really appreciate it. Um, you should definitely go check out the film appraisers. Hey, Josh, talk about the film appraisers. The film appraisers, Joe and I, talk about films films not movies films we talk films. about films that <laughs> that that uh we just look there's no rules to it we we try to take a little bit of the fancy and a little bit of beyond fancy and we talk about everything in between we try to do what makes us a little bit different is that we appraise films so instead of doing a thumbs up thumbs down or a one to five stars or a recommendation not a recommendation we try to break things down into categories because we found that if you break things into subsets and then you give a dollar value, right? So we're appraising, like you would take it to your pawn shop. If you appraise it uh, for a certain dollar value, once you get a total, it's interesting the way things fall out. And so that's what we do. Uh, we evaluate all of our favorite films. We have guests, we have listeners send us recommendations. Joe and I put our favorite films on there from time to time. Uh, sometimes they work. Sometimes they don't. Uh, it's My just, favorite it's films are always thing. the best. I do want to take a quick second while we're on topic of movies, because this is like very relevant time wise. Um, I am, and this is also a, a film appraisers related to a film appraisers staff selection for me. I am still shook about Ray Liotta's passing. Yeah. Um, I, that really hit me yeah. like both video games and movies that man is responsible mm -hmm. for some of my favorite performances of all time goodfellas being the one that i brought to the show I, he was young and i didn't see it coming and it like it actually really shocked like it really shocked me um i i guess i just it's hard to yeah. put into words how good he was at what he did and how impactful he was like I saw some real bad movies, like in the name of the King, a dungeon siege story <laughs> that featured Ray Liotta. And he, what he put in a thousand percent effort in that movie. Yeah. Like he didn't, he didn't phone that in. It was a total trash movie and he didn't phone in at all. And, um, yep. that kind of professionalism and skill set is, is hard to come by. And by all accounts, he was also a pretty cool dude. Like everybody who I've yeah. seen ever talk about working with him had like just nothing but great stories. So, and he was in the middle of filming a new movie too. That's right. Yeah. That's um, right. It's really tragic. And uh, that really hit me. Like a lot of, like there, are, I could name a couple of celebrity deaths 
in the past five or six years that like actually hit me. Um, you know, it's always sad, but some of them like really hit. And he's one of them. Him, Alan Rickman. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Alan Rickman really got me. Uh, Chadwick Boseman really got me. I didn't see that coming at all. Um, just to, you know, it's tough. Um, not to be a total downer at the end of the episode or while we're promoting <laughs> the film appraisers, but I felt like I wanted to talk about Ray Liotta while it was relevant because we're, we're, by the time the next film appraisers come out, it's going to be a few weeks since he passed. Uh, yeah, yeah, and a little bit less, a little bit less relevant. So I felt like I needed to to air that one out there. Um, By by Grapthar Sam or by (laughs) Grapthar, by what a loss, right? (laughs) Um, But film appraisers is really fun. I love doing the show. We have come a long way together on that show. It's really, it's really something. So if you haven't checked that out, even though I like put the link up at the end of every episode of this show, go check it out. Hear me and Josh together more often. Um, you can also, you can find everything, everything at the filmpages.com, right, Josh? That's correct. <laughs> you, you, you took that, you took that lead from me instead of a hundred different one links. thing I've learned from you is <laughs> put it all in a link. <laughs> all in one link. Um, and that link for this show is the barrelhousepodcast.com. Um, and at the barrelhousepodcast.com, you can find all of the ways to support the show, listen to the show, buy merch, all the things. Uh, do that rate and review both the shows both the film pages and barrel house five stars on itunes that means a lot to both of us and uh until next time drink whiskey be merry and take care the barrel house is written produced and hosted by joe kane and it's a proud member of the earglue media network views and opinions expressed on this show belong only to the mouth they came out of And as always, please remember to drink responsibly. Slanjava.